Can you tell me where you were born? In Gambles Yard on Princess Street, Scarborough, 1920. It's straight from the town. You come down Centre Peg Street onto Princess Street, and then we moved up to Long Westgate to a bigger house. Men went to sea and that, you know, it was a hard life. Oh, it was a big family on my dad's side. And on my mum's side, they were just ordinary people. They weren't seagoing people, not like my dad's side was. And when I got to 14, I went out working and maybe five shillings a week in them days. We started with two and six, half a crown. Skinning and baiting, five o'clock in the morning. Half a crown for a line, so that when they went out in the cobbles, they just dropped a line all the way on, and that caught the fish. And then when my father was on trawlers, the boys used to stand at Endic Castle, and they could tell any trawler who, the boat, who was sailing in them. So they used to be called foy lads, and they used to run and tell the wives, the skipper's wives, that they would be in on the, as soon as the tide got to a certain pitch, you see. Things like that, I mean, you don't have them nowadays, no. They used to get tuppence, tuppence off the skipper's wives. Oh, there would be lads of 14 and 16, you know. If they had a book to go in, nearly all the people that lived down the bottom end belonged to the sea. You know, the husbands, they may be in trawlers and things like that. But my dad used to go to sea when he was four years old, in cobbles. Yeah, they got trained as early as that, just watching them fish. And then when they were old enough, they were would join them. It's a life that you've got to understand. It was the money. You won't pay much for the fish. But then gradually it got better and better, and then it dropped again. Everybody was happy in their own way. They hardly ever shut the doors. We'd, we made our own fun. We were up on the dikes below the castle. It's a big Dyke affair, and uh, we used to play hours up there in summer holidays, away from everything and that. But when you were old enough to work, that was it. Oh, when you were ten, always found a job to do. That's why the uh, lad used to stand and watch for boats coming in so they could take run and tell the wives. Are you sure it's him? If not, you'd get out next time. <laughs> get out. Very broad talking was the fisher people. No, then, lad. What's the doing? No. You'd get all such as that. No politeness. <laughs> it was a good life, though. All the wives had skippers' daughters and that. You used to go to boys' and buy a and a half a penny worth of bits of material. And we used to sit on curbside sewing, making little dolls' clothes, about nine or ten, oh. before war it is. We wanted for nothing, but it was never money or anything like that. If you wanted anything doing, you run an errand for a penny for it, and thought you got the world. But I'm glad I'm not being born now. We were far better alive. I mean, nobody was envious of you. Because we were all in the same boat, as they used to say. I wouldn't have liked to have been born any other time, I don't think. I'm 94 in October. Because, you see, when my dad been a skipper, he wasn't allowed to draw a door when they were out to work. So she had to go out, do anything, you know. But he was in, always in... Well, like beginning, middle of 1930s was the worst. 
He stopped going to sea because he couldn't sell the fish. It was too expensive to buy and then to resell. And then war made him again. He wasn't allowed to draw any dough because he was his old master. That was in them days. And in the summer of uh, when they weren't fishing, they were taking people out in boats for for rides, sixpence a go, something like that, you know. Especially when big warships come and that. I wouldn't have made a Jenny Wren. I was always sick on the sea. Now that's my grandfather in the lifeboat, as well as fishing. For six weeks he never went to bed, never changed his clothes, because the weather was so bad. So no sooner they got in, they were out again. That's all I know about that. So I wasn't born then, 1917, 1918. There used to be a Bethel about fishermen. You know, so they got a cup of tea when they're coming from the sea. Well, they've made that into a cafe now. And there used to be um, a little prison at the bottom of the bottom of the hill. That's where they'd spend the night if they were drunk and disorderly. <laughs> they had a very hard life. He died when he was just over 50. There's no age really. But that's how they were dressed when they went to sea. Yes, he was bright ginger. My dad's often took, said they felt his hands if they wouldn't do as they were told. And if they were late, in, from the courting days, you, you know, wanted to know where they'd been, what they'd been doing. And of course, at the Second World, Second War, nobody bothered. <laughs> Down on the front, ready for, you know, you have to be somewhere near when lifeboat rockets went off and they'd all run to it. And it was ruining them days, you know, like that. Grandma never saw him for five weeks, only to get dry clothes. Place on front, facing this um, post office. What was a post office? It's, or is it now James Centre and things like that? There used to be a tunny. <laughs> it was a place, and there used to be a tunny, and it used to stink. It was there all summer holidays. I think it was too much to go in and see this Tunny fish. It smelled <laughs> It's what was caught, and so Scarborough was showing it, you see. You could smell it, there was no need to go in and see it, you could smell it. And you've seen all the nets and that. But I mean, there was days and weeks that they couldn't get to see, it was so bad weather. But I'm glad I was born then. I wouldn't like to be born now because what's it going to be like in another 20 years? 30 years. There was always one family, cousins to another family, same as us. He had plenty of brothers that all went to sea. There was only one in my dad's family that never took it up. No, that was Uncle Tommy, he was a butcher. But rest. I had an uncle, and he used to, while they were fishing, he used to get overboard and have a swim. Middle Ocean, where he died of mastoids at 28, and buried on his wedding day. That was dreadful one Christmas. I remember because I had to marry my cousin while the funeral was on. And you've heard of St Thomas's Church, have you? And that was a gorgeous church, right, right in the middle of uh, Big Hill. Oh, it was pretty. I don't know what it is now. Been to church any longer. We used to go there on a on a night, you know, for uh, games and such as that. That's when we got older. We weren't allowed in when we were younger. But the children of today have missed what we had, and it never cost a penny, because you made your own ent entertainment. There was no wireless. No televisions or anything. I mean, the Queen would tell you that because she was born in 20. I think she was born 1925, wasn't she? There used to be a place called Bethel 
and there was a man in there. He was most marvellous with the fishermen. If you know, they used to their oil skins and that used to cut the necks and thing when they were skating and baiting. He used to rub ointment on them and get them better before they went to sea again. He was a marvellous man. There wasn't nothing he could do. So they always went to him as soon as they got him from sea. All the fingers and that were stained with fish, you know, skate. Then we had the fisher girls down. Now you couldn't understand the word they were saying. And people used to put them up for half a crown a night. I know it was a honest job, but, oh, if you'd have seen them going, they were filling tubs in no time. People used to stand and watch them. It used to stink. It was very hard work. It was for the women as well, because they used to bait and skein for them. It was all done by, you know where the Golden Ball is, pub? Up that passage. Is it like a passageway, isn't they? Up that way. Yeah, it's all altered now with those cheap shops and things like that. Where you never got anything like that. It was cafes where they had dancing and, you know, tea dances and things like that. Small ice cream parlours. Now, there was one called Mrs Riley, by God, could she make ice cream? <laughs> we used to stand and watch her, watch her do it, you know. Then there used to be a singing shop down up front, just past the, you know where the tram is? The end of the front. There used to be a singing shop there. You could go in, it was free, and have a good old sing song with, on a big chart. It used to, it was all free and so they, it was always full. There was always some... Then we'd have a, maybe a special singer. Because in your kids' day, that's, you used to roam, you see. You used to go into places like that because it was all free. I think there was one playing piano, I'm not quite sure, but it was called, it was like a little music hall. It was always full. Then there was Gaila Land, a big um, palace underneath. You know where the um, motor, ca uh, where the garage is now. That used to be Gaila Land, but it was all knocked down and made into that. And then one Saturday morning from Woolworths, what was top of Vernon Road with Maypole, or was it Lipton's? It was one at shops. A tramway run set off to go down but it run away and it went clean over into baths at bottom. Nobody was there, nobody went, were in baths at the time. <laughs> went completely over. I had books somewhere with them all in, you know, showing you all the accidents, what happened and things like that. Because kids used to swear as well in them days, you know. Then all of a sudden they'd get a clip. No matter who it was, wasn't always your mother or it was neighbour or something like that, giving you such a clout. But we lived when Mum was first married. She got a little place called Gamble's Yard, and there was two. Her door was the first one up the passage. Then you walked a bit further, and it, Juliana had a goodie shop at the bottom. So her back door led out facing doors. But she had her own gar her own backyard. There was no such things as gardens and that. And um, and there was another cottage in this backyard and there was our lavatory and um, our windows looked into the backyard. It was hor horrible but it was four shillings a week and uh, then my mum had chance at this bigger and better house and she took it on Long Westgate. Nearly 12 shillings a week, what a difference. But, oh, comfort. But it had a bathroom in or anything like that. We used to have tin bath in front of fire. <laughs> Never good bath like that. Kids today don't know. Hmm. Put it that way.